and I read the surah and I say A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ida Jaa Nasrullahi Wal Fath and my mind is completely empty. I don't know what comes after this. I remember the exact moment I was inspired to do Hibs. And that moment came at Juma in the Muslim Student Association when I was in like ninth grade. The context here is that the previous Ramadan, I had done Ihtikaf for the first time. And I had like many, many transformational experiences there. One of them being that I met a guy who really opened me up to the world of critical thinking within Islam. And he was also someone who was like a leader of our community. He was something, someone I really looked up to and admire, and I still do to this day. What had happened was, in the MSA, you know, they always struggle to find khatibs. So I said, hey, I know a guy. I called this guy and I said, hey, can you do a khutbah or MSA? He said, yes. He came and gave a khutbah. MashaAllah, it was amazing. What happened afterwards is that he finished the khutbah and he told me, Ahsan, why don't you go and lead? It wasn't something I really wanted to do, but because I, this guy I really respected, I, you know, complied anyways. So, I start the first rakah, and I read Fatiha, and I read the surah, and I say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ida Jaa Nasrullahi Wal Fatih, and I blank. And my mind is completely empty. I don't know what comes after this. One of the smallest surahs in the entire Qur'an. And now here I am in front of someone I really respect. And I cannot finish the surah. Of course it was a simple surah. Everyone knew it. Someone corrected me. The, the salah went on. But that one moment was enough to change my life. Because in that moment, one of the teachings from my mother came back to me from my childhood. I remember when I was like six or seven, I was sitting with my mom and she was telling me that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will present the believers with a staircase going into Jannah, paradise. And he will tell the believers, read and ascend. Continue to read from the Quran and wherever you stop, that is where you will stop on the staircase. And I can remember very clearly having a strong desire to be at the top of that staircase. As children, you're very simple-minded, right? Like you, you see a reward, you want it. So I, this is exactly how it was for me. I, I saw that reward and I was like, I want that. I want to be at the top of that staircase. But then, shaitan came to me. And he said to me, Oh, Ahsan, do you know how much work that is? Do you know how much effort that is? You're going to spend two, three years on hifz and you know, drop everything, do memorize the Qur'an. But then what about all those people who forget it afterwards? What about all those people who are not able to maintain it? How will you put in all that work? And you know, my, my disposition is a little bit lazy. So I was like, yeah, how am I going to do all that work, you know? So instead, I lied to myself. And I remember feeling discomfort with this lie because I knew it wasn't true. And the lie I said was like, okay, by the time I'm my parents' age, maybe I'll have read the Qur'an so much that I'll memorize it without any effort. I mean, what a, we all know what a big lie that is, right? But subhanAllah, even I knew it, even as like a six-year-old or whatever. But when I was in that moment, and I felt the humiliation of forgetting إِذَا جَاءَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ I remembered that staircase. And I imagined Allah telling me, read and ascend, and I get to إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ And that's the end of my journey. That's the end. And I said, how will I show my face to Allah? When Allah asked me, O oh, Ahsan, I gave you 60 years, 70 years, 80 years of life. Ahsan, what did you earn from the Qur'an? What will I say to Allah? That, oh Allah, my mom taught me 10 surahs when I was a kid and I forgot half of them. That's what I brought. <laughs> how, could I, how could I show my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If I felt this humiliation here in front of someone I respected, what type of humiliation would I feel in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What type of humiliation would I feel in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
when I am stuck at إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ and all of my friends who put an effort into the Qur'an are going ahead of me on this staircase. I said, this cannot be. So this one moment changed my life forever. And the coming weeks was me dismantling all of the various excuses that I had in my head. Right? So one of the excuses I had, even as like someone who was like 14, 15, was I'm too old. I'm too old. Right, like Hevz is done when you're like seven, eight, or maybe like ten. But fourteen, fifteen, you're a little too old. And I said, wait a minute. Didn't the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam start memorizing when he was forty? Weren't there many Sahaba who started memorizing after him? Isn't it also the guarantee of Allah subhanahu wa taala that He says, "Wala qad yassarna al Quran li dhikri fahal min mudakir." That we have made this Qur'an easy to remember, so who will take advantage of it? Am I still going to use this excuse on the Day of Judgment that I was too old? At 15 years old? SubhanAllah. And I said, number two, let's say I am too old. Let's say I, I'm very bad at memorizing, very slow at memorizing. And I die before I finish. But is it not the case that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us through the hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ The actions are by intentions. And you will have what you intended. So if I intend to be Hafiz but I don't get to that destination, is it not the case that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still write me amongst the Huffad? The third thing I said is, when it comes to time and effort, what else will I present to Allah? Like what other thing that can I do with this time? What other thing can I do with my effort that I could present in front of Allah that would be better than saying, Here, Allah, I spent my time on the Qur'an. What would be better than that? And I couldn't think of anything. Because my degree, my money, my family, all this stuff, you know, maybe there's some benefit in it. But is it the Qur'an? Does it compare to the Qur'an? So I said in that moment, I said, Oh Allah, if it takes me 60 years to memorize the Qur'an, I will memorize it, inshallah. If it takes me 60 years, because I had seen the people who memorized when they were young, and they didn't maintain it. So I knew that it is not something that you can just do. Memorizing the Qur'an is not an action. It is a lifestyle. It is a commitment. That even if you memorize in 6 months, or 2 months, or 1 month, you still have to spend the rest of your life revising. So for me, that 60 years was a lifelong commitment. It was a marriage. I am going to, to have this relationship with the Qur'an until I reach the grave. And the final source of inspiration that really, really sealed the deal was the story of the man in the grave. That there is a man who you know, lives his life, dies, and is buried in his grave. And all of his family members and his friends and his, you know, people who barely know him, they're all there at the, at the grave. They come, they weep, they make dua, they leave. One after the other, after the other, after the other. Until his wife, his kids, everyone leaves. But one man remains. And this man cries and cries and cries and makes dua and makes dua and makes dua for this person until... The angels become impatient. And the angels say, Oh man, we have some business with this person. That the, the hisab begins once everyone is 40 steps away, right? So they say, we need you to leave. And he says, I will not leave. And they'll say, no, no, we need to start the hisab, we need you to leave. He said, I will not leave him because he never left me. And he would say, I am the Qur'an that he used to read and implement throughout his life. And subhanAllah, the angels will say, okay, let's just start the hisab. And they start asking him questions. But the Qur'an will respond. And then he will be lifted, you know, after the hisab of the grave, there will be the questioning of the Day of Judgment. And whatever questions there are, the Qur'an will respond. And the Qur'an will grab this man's hand 
and take him through all the ordeals of the day of judgment and will not leave his hand until he enters into paradise. And subhanAllah, what will the Qur'an say? You never left me in this life, so I will not leave you in the next. The Qur'an becomes his lawyer, his attorney, his defense. SubhanAllah, I said, who is successful other than the one who has called the Qur'an to defend them on the Day of Judgment? And this became my motivation. 